Hello and welcome to the How to Trade Like a Pro podcast. This is Wieland Alt and in this episode I present you an interview that Gimma Goyadi from Astronaut to Trading in Jakarta, Indonesia held with me about trading, technical analysis and life recently for CEO Talk. Before we start, please take a closer look to the risk disclaimer on the show notes and now enjoy the podcast. Hello trade trainers, welcome back to the CEO talk and this time is really a special day because here we are I will talk about is technical analysis is still relevant and how about the war between the fundamental analysis guy or technical analysis guy or even some people who develop a new method in, in, in charting world they're using like smart money concept and they think that smart money concept is better than the classic technical analysis we're going to talk this deeper with Whelan, the president of International Federation Technical Analysis stay tuned, subscribe and share to the others Alright, Will and welcome to Astronachi. Gumma, thank you so much for the invitation. It's really it's an honor to invite you. Yes. You are a trader who live in the trading for a living world. Is that correct? Yes, it's true. So is that trading for a living or trading in and traveling or what? Well it's live for trading. Live for trading. Yeah. Live for trading is not trading for a living. No, it's trading for a living, live for trading. You know, I'm concerned about trading 24 hours a day. 24 hours yeah, a day. Yeah, because I'm, I'm dreaming, I'm talking, I'm living trading. Mm -hmm. So, because I do so much in this whole universe of trading, within uh -huh. the industry, with talking to people, with education, with doing my own stuff, of course, with the IFTA, with the VTED in Germany. So I'm always connected to traders, and therefore, yes, I live for traders. Great. So you are now active as International Federation Technical Analysis President. Yes. Right? Sure. So this talk this podcast I'm gonna sh shoot you with a very sharp and maybe is really really not comfortable questions try me try you <laughs> all, try right. Me. <laughs> all right so I got 11 questions that okay. I, I guess this will answer so many questions from okay. other people right well, you, you should have shown me before <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a surprise so people yeah, know go. that there's no setup on this yeah of so course everything is from you so yeah International Federation Technical Analysis, I'm a member and today we talk as the Certified Technical Analyst. Yes. Do they really need to find a mentor or guru who has um, that certification? Yes and no. I mean, in the market, nobody asks for a certification. If you're a trader, nobody asks. But for if sure. you're an analyst, then... Yeah, so if you trade for yourself. Like oh, okay. Being, you, know, okay. you know, like cool. being a yeah. retail private trader. Mm -hmm. yes. Of course, in the market, nobody asks. Yes. But the market for proof your knowledge and your skills and these skills need to come somewhere you know so you have to learn and there's there are two ways you learn from the market by trial and error and it costs you a fortune for mm -hmm. sure or you have a detour and just or make like like a shortcut and detour shortcut and you learn from a professional you know you learn from an organization you learn from the best experts who compiled an educational system for you to show you not just the pitfalls of trading and analysis, but also all these things who really work in the market. So then it's your decision. Do you want to go the long, hard way at the school of hard knocks? Or do you want to go like the path everybody else has gone before, mm -hmm. which leads to success? even also in a pretty short time. So this is a decision everybody has to make. Therefore, yes and no. The market doesn't ask, but you need to have the knowledge. So the certification is like a proof that you are at least standard based yeah. on the consensus sure. Sure. from any theory. Sure, right? sure. But, but if you want to go to the industry, like yeah. technical analyst somewhere in an, in an institutional company, of course, they are not just looking for, hey, I've read this book, they're looking for a certification signed by somebody who was able to sign this, you know, and then things are different. Yeah, but some people say that, hey, you don't have to go to one mentor, two mentor, the most important part, you can just go to YouTube for the free lessons, right. and you can do try and error. Yes. By having, doing that, you can just selling your um, copy trade in a platform right. to prove that you're right or wrong. True. So, True. do you think that this path is, is good enough? No. No, it's not. 
and it can't work and it will not work in cannot the long work. run. No, in the You're long sure run, about it? Yeah, in the long run, it's very very hard to follow. So the reason is very simple. First of all, talking about YouTube, I know. We both have YouTube channel. You're more successful with yours than I do. <laughs> because, well, mine is just like, okay, a video, just put it in it, right? Okay. But, okay. Wow, you have so, so many subscribers mm. and you have such a great content. Mm, thank you. But still, it's something you give away for free. And there's nothing wrong with giving things away for free because all that we know, all the theory, if you search long enough, it's available somewhere, mm. right? For free. So that's not the deal. The deal is something else. You cannot learn trading just by having like a video. You only can learn trading by feedback. And feedback is what comes from education, what comes from coaching, what comes from training, what comes from some kind of peer group that gives you, ah, maybe do this better or different the next time. Mm -hmm. So that's how you learn. I mean, why should it be different in trading than any other education? I mean, you're pilot. You don't, you don't learn pilot from a video, right? Yes, no, yeah. <laughs> so from Flight Simulator, from Microsoft, you don't learn it yes, that way. correct. It might be a good addition just to get a touch, but you learn from feedback. Like, are you kidding me? You want to fly this way? <laughs> correct, correct. So why should it be different in training? This is one thing. Second is, from my point of view and also from my experience, trading is the most individual thing you can do in the world. It's highly individual because we all come with different knowledge, with different mindset, with different beliefs about money, about yeah, things, how to about about work ethics at all. There are people sitting like the whole day in front of the, yeah. of the computer screen mm -hmm. and trying to make one trade. And there are people doing one trade, go. Yeah. You know, open screen, open software, trade, done. Right? Correct, correct. So it's individual. But if trading is so individual and everybody has its own beliefs, own needs, own everything, how can you follow somebody else and someone's system in a 100% way yeah. that, that it really works like the other one does? And it's, it's proven that it's not working by the turtles. Yes, that's correct. But people are going to ask to, like, you travel around right. and you're like, no maiden position, yes. you are living for trading. Right. The biggest question is, do you make money? Yes, sure. How can people know that you make money? Why don't you just show your portfolio to the public? Well, I'll that's that's yeah. the biggest question and people keep it challenging is. us, it right? Is. Like, why don't you show the MQL, you're a Forex trader, right? Or maybe yeah, also Forex, uh, what, my FX book or something. Yeah. And how do people believe that you make money? Actually, I don't care if they believe or not. Wait. You don't care. I don't care. Okay. Belief and you don't think that showing the portfolio is important? No, it's not. Because it doesn't make any difference to somebody if I am a successful trader. Because if I'm a successful trader, it's not the guarantee that they will be. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, yes, they can copy everything, but they will disturb the trade because they feel uncomfortable with this, because they feel like, no, I want to approach the market differently. I learned for myself. I learned literally every strategy during the years. This is what you do. But I always felt with a lot of strategies, it sounds great, but I can't do it. It's not me. Because, yes, like trading breakouts, a lot of people trade breakouts, following the trend, doing breakout trades, you know. Mm -hmm. And always I felt like, yes, it's a, that's a way to go. And when I entered the trade, trading a breakout, I always felt uncomfortable. So what did I do? I went into the trade and disturbed it. Ah, oh, no, not so sure, but you know. Mm. So I felt like, no, I need to have a different approach which fits to me. Okay. So okay. that's it. So you, ha you have your like commercial program, like a training for... Right. And what is your response? I want to know the culture in Germany or mm -hmm. anywhere, any mm -hmm. part of the world compared to Indonesia. Yeah. If you're selling something and then people say that, hmm, you're selling something, show me your MQL and then yeah. I want to see your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure that you make money with your method. Yeah. Do you think it's important? Or, yeah, how, how about our society, technical analysis, technical trader, right. uh, overcome the situation? See, I don't believe it's important, again, for a very simple reason. Uh, first of all, yes, of course, I teach also the strategy I do, but I always say 
every video you can see on YouTube or somewhere else for me, I always say, guys, this is just for impulse. This is what I do. It doesn't mean that you have to do it this way and you will not do it this way. Mm -hmm. You always make a little change here, a little change there, and then you have a different strategy. I mean, you might have the same idea, but management is different, entry and exit, and you know, position sizing, everything will be different. So that's why trading is individual. Second, talking about education. What do we educate? We talk about analysis, methods of analysis. So, and when it comes to methods of analysis, it's like, okay, this is the approach to have an idea of what the market is already going to do, right? Yeah. Or what, what is the past, what will be the future, most likely. I mean, we're talking about uh, probabilities, right? Correct. So, and that is the point why I don't like this idea, show me your account, show me your MyFX, because it's all bullshit. Is, is that common in Germany or yeah, in Europe? Yeah, sure. Oh my, yeah, sure. I have these discussions. Regarding the technical analysis nowadays after the pandemic with the hyper volatility, do you think the technical analysis is still relevant to make money? Yes, for sure. You sure? Yes. How about people think that we are just like um, the full people, like living in a fantasy world, who using the lines and yeah. then speaking about the charts. Yeah. Once, once they they look at the market, they find a proof that somehow technical analysis completely doesn't work. Yeah. And whatever they use, like they're using the valuation model in the stocks market or yeah. any quant trading, yeah. they think this is the better way than the classic technical analysis, linings Maybe. and so on. Yeah. So. How you, as the president of the IFTA, um, think about this and then what is your strategy mm -hmm. to make people understand that mm -hmm. these two uh, branches of the knowledge is yeah. really, really useful. Yeah. Since like astronauts, we use like four-dimensional, macroeconomic, devaluation, yeah. technical, and of course, astrological. True. I try to combine everything, yeah. but still people like reviews the fact that the technicals work. So, yeah, and again, in trading, everything is about your own beliefs. You know, there's this, there's this very famous quote by Henry Ford. And he what says, when it comes to marketing, 50% is, is a uh, false investment. But you don't know which 50%, right? All right. And the yeah. same with the trading. Of course, they are, you follow your own beliefs. And if you believe, ah. if you believe that technical analysis doesn't work, you will get the proof for it. Because it's all connected to how you look at it. The How, perspective. Yeah, the perfect, your own perspective, and that's therefore it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And if you believe it doesn't work, you will automatically search for different approaches. If you're a strong believer in, like, let's say, fundamental data, you will have an approach, and we have a lot of fund managers who are successful with this. But if you like in day trading, you will not end any further with fundamental data. Because all that matters in day trading, short-term trading, is moving off the market. I mean, even those people say the short-term trading is nothing other than gambling. What no, do it's think? not. For a simple reason, if you do a proper analysis, and again, now we're talking again about um, the probabilities. And if you short do, do your analysis in a short time frame, right? let's say five minutes. Mm -hmm. And yes, markets move up and down. Whoever knows why. Yeah. But what we can see in the chart is, and that's the that's basic uh, prerequisite of a technical analysis, it says uh, the market price uh, contains every information. Correct. So you don't need why the market moves. You don't need to know why the price is the price it is. All you need to know is the price is there. Mm -hmm. and the price is there because somebody, two parties said, okay, I buy, I sell. Deal. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what you see in the Correct. chart. And everything else is like, okay, what might follow next? Yeah. At certain levels, like support and resistance, you know? And then a technical analysis comes into place when, when it feels like, okay, we have this certain situation right now, we have certain levels, and what is now the edge? In trading, we are looking for an edge. And this edge is something that differs gambling from trading. Mm -hmm. And again, in, in gambling, you cannot answer the question in what direction or what color will be the next. This is, by the way, a very good example because it's also, they lose a lot. But by having the right numbers and the right money management, because the Correct. zero, Correct. right, the zero pays even more than a single number. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, 
that's how they make the money. So they lose the giveaway to all the players and gamblers, but the moment they win, they win big. Win big. And, it's like a risk to reward ratio. Yeah. And at the end, they have a profit. Yeah. So that's how it works. It's also how it works in, in trading. So you need to have the edge. And you can find the edge by technical analysis. Correct. With answering mm. the question, in what direction will the market move with the highest probability? You've got a better odds so, with technical analysis. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, looking to the CFA Institute, and they already put the technical analysis in their curriculum. Are you aware that uh, the CFA Institute now is like uh, put technical analysis in their certification program? Yeah, I mean, technical analysts, it has a reason. Yeah, know, that's it. I mean, now, uh, do you have any information why after so many years and now the CFA Institute's like put technical analysis in their program? Well, actually, it's not that we are changing thoughts, right? Yeah. But obviously, if they decide to put this into it, they need to have a reason, and the reason is technical analysis is important. It Otherwise, works. Yeah, it yeah. works and it's popular. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. So let's focus on, on fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And I know there are two, two sides of the coin, two, you know, two opinions. Some say we don't need fundamental analysis at all. And some say we don't, need, we don't need any technical analysis at all. And both is right and both is wrong. Mm. Because if you go short term, okay, it's not so important to have fundamental analysis. On the other hand, if you go long term, like investing, I'm pretty sure it makes a difference if you buy Apple or Nokia. Okay, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. So you better watch what you're buying and why. And people also say that like a technical analysis is not a fixed science. That's why people hate it. It's like yeah. you look at it and I'm look at it, it's different different for everybody so right. there's no like certain standard and somehow we are already follow like head and shoulder but right. the price is going up yeah but it's like the fundamental i follow the valuation is most likely is based on the scientific or calculation yeah. is like more reliable right. than just looking to the picture which right. is everybody looks at the different way yeah what is the answer for this really I, I'm, I'm studying myself since for almost 20 years now for the technical analysis? Or yeah, right? technical analysis, trading, okay. mindset, okay. approach, management. So what is the truth? The truth is what you do in your chart. And that's why it's so important to fully understand what technical analysis is about and what it can do and what it cannot do. It can't make you any promises, mm -hmm. but it can answer you one question. Again, in what direction will the market go with the most, uh, with the most highest probability the next moment? And this is all we have to answer. And then we have to place a stop loss, done. Mm -hmm. Stop loss, profit taking, and you're done. Yeah, that's correct. And regarding the technical analysis, if we already talk about the fundamental versus the technical, yeah. and the, the summary, summary of all is the, your own belief matters. Absolutely. If you don't have a, any belief or you are not feeling comfortable to have the belief in technical or right. even fundamental, just right. go on your own way. Correct? You have to go your own way. Correct. You don't have to follow anyone. No. Right? And you find your own um, characteristic, limitation, right. things like that. Yeah. But how if in technical analysis world, we deal with the charts, okay. but we, we have the classic technical, which is we know the Dow theory, Elliott wave, and then right. the other things. And the other uh, new concept is like people say about the smart money concept. Mm -hmm. They're using the chart, same with us, yeah. but they don't believe or they don't agree with all the wave or trend analysis. analysis. Mm -hmm. But what they believe is like, we can only win, especially in the Forex program, because they believe that the Forex has no more like a human supply and demand base, but is using the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Everything controlled by the computer. Mm -hmm. So they think that like ordinary or classic technical analysis no longer works. Yeah. So we only need to care about where is the institutional order block, mm -hmm. uh, order flows, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. supply and demand, unfilled mm -hmm. order mm -hmm. to beat the market. Mm -hmm. And then they start thinking that the classic technical analysis, they are useless. And now this become like a big war between technical analysis guy. What do yeah. you think about it? Well, it's always the case. I mean, there's always something new and it's okay because right. everything is new gives new impulses. And you know, when, whenever something new comes into the market, a lot of people feel like, oh wow, it's new. Maybe finally I can get successful. Like a holy grail. Yes. 
Everybody is searching for the Holy Grail, actually. Is there anyone? Yes. Holy Grail? It is. Oh yeah? Yes, it's well, you. Uh, it's you and your mindset. Correct. That's that's exactly what I think. True. Wow. I keep teaching people like, you know, there's a holy grail. Right. It's, it's whatever in here, right. what, what you said about yourself. Right. Absolutely. Oh, I'm really glad that you have the same yeah. view. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely is the case. So we can be happy and it's progress Correct. when new things come up because it gives us the opportunity to review our own systems and maybe to add something. And it gives others also the opportunity to have a broader choice. Correct. And in teaching and education, it's our responsibility to show different choices to the people mm -hmm. and help them to find their way. Okay, that's, that's right. really great. But is that smart money concept a part of approved technical analysis under International Federation Technical Analysis? Um, no, we're not considering it that much. Of course, we are aware of everything that's coming up in the market. But you know, it's not like we're jumping on everything that's new and adding it to the CFD syllabus. So we, 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 we are checking on this, we discuss everything, but it takes time that we really feel like, okay, this is something we want to be standard in the industry. And as, as IFTA, education, we have the highest standard on education. So we can't jump on everything that's just coming by, even though it's there for a couple of years. I mean, we're still teaching things like point and figure. Yeah. Actually, not really people use it, but it can be useful. And if you go really into financial industry, everybody knows about it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how do we know that, or how does IFTA will decide whether this new theory will be included as technical analysis standard? Yeah. How to prove it? Is that from the society who make money from that method or what? No. It's not about if you really like say, okay, I just made a fortune with it, it's, it's a new standard. Look, we don't even have Heike Nashi already. Oh yeah? No, we don't have. You remove it or? No, we don't have it at all. Okay. We, we didn't have it, so. But you put remove. Ichimoku inside. Yes, true. But not Heike Nashi for whatever reason. So you see, we always have to, to make a decision. It doesn't mean that Heike Nashi is bad. I love Heike Nashi. When I did my CFTE, I wasn't president of IFTA at all. So this is what follows. Maybe career advice. You yeah, never know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 and I was sitting there and I was challenging Gregor, Dr. Gregor Bauer, who is uh, really very, very deep into this uh, program. He's, he's part of the education committee for ages, right? Five or six. And I was challenging him, asking, why don't we have Heike Nashi? Mm -hmm. So, and of course, we had a discussion. The reason was that, yes, it's good, but it's not that good that it's needed as an addition. Mm -hmm. And still, I can actually work. Not for me, I like it, so it's, it's a nice concept, but I don't feel it's nice to be late always one period in the market. That's what I can actually is about, right? Mm -hmm. So it looks good, no disturbances, red, green, but, you know. Correct. And if we talk about you learn about this industry for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You learn about so many strategies. Yeah. Do you think that it's better to learn or mastering one method instead of learning everything that you don't have like a fixed strategies? What do you think about people who yeah. say that, hey, it's better to have like only one strategies and then use that? And, oh yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. So which one is better? And then and after you learn about so many strategies, do we need to combine both strategies or just use one and very simple one? or? So, after all these years, it's not, my journey will never end. I'm pretty sure about this. Okay. First of all, I'm too excited about everything that's going on. I'm very curious about development, but I always, I test things. I test um, part of the smart concept. I test all this volume profile, which is also mm -hmm. pretty fancy. Mm -hmm. And then I put this on my chart and then I see, yeah, okay, what people are talking about. Oh, this is a point of control, you know? And then I, and they say, yeah, I, I enter the market at the point of control. I say, okay, let's have a look at it. Mm -hmm. And then I see, in a lot of cases, a lot of trades are similar to mine. Because, uh, you know, yeah, because yeah. if you look at the chart, you see like you have maybe a bottom, you have maybe a candlestick signal, an oh wonder miracle. It's because of the point of control. Correct. Or maybe not. You correct, know? correct. Because it's always like, okay, I have to explain this to myself more and I believe more on this. That's why. 
And I feel, okay, and I see that's why. And I have, you know, I, I have in Germany, I have a podcast. And I have, meanwhile, like 100 interviews about trading. And every time I talk with, with a colleague about trading, and we have different approaches by definition, yeah. we figure out that at the end, you're doing all the same but coming from a different angle. Right? Correct, I agree on that. I mean, if you're trend following, then basically you'll yeah. also do some trend following sure. trading with sure. some per different perspective. Sure, and that's why, why it's important when, then, when you say, okay, um, do I need to have one strategy or is it better to have like a bunch of strategies? I think both is right. I have one favorite strategy, but of course I can also find some, some other ideas to enter the market. So I don't sit there from front of my computer just waiting for one. Correct. I also have some ideas, ah, okay, this could be a good idea now, let's, let's, let's take this trade. But when it comes for a new trader to enter into the market, you know I'm talking about now with almost 20 years experience. But if you enter the market, if you like new, if you like a learning stadium, Yes, it's good to have one strategy, but you have to find it first. And there you have all these strategies. So how can you be sure that the one you're trading it's with the best. is the best? <laughs> so you need to learn about, okay, what is, you, what is he doing? Okay, show me, show me yours. What do you have? Uh -huh. What is yours? And then you find uh, what's suitable to yourself. And then you feel like, okay, I pick here, I pick there. I like this. And this is mine. Yes, correct. Right? And, and find that comfortable for you, yeah. right? Like, yeah, about a risk and about yeah. whatever, like, you make you happy and then safe for you. Right? Yes, yeah, sure. The reason is, if you don't trade the strategy that fits 100% to yourself, like a glove, right? Yeah. You don't want to have a glove that's like, you know? Yeah. You right. want a like, perfect fit. How do you think about live trading that could be a tool to prove that you are a qualified or standard trader who sure. can apply the, the, your skills, your knowledge, right? Yeah. To make a trading plan and to prove that at least you can make a good analysis. Yeah. No matter you trade or not that yeah. particular time, but right. at least you show to you, to the public that, hey, this this is me. And yeah. then I have a, I'm brave enough to show you my trading plan True. and enter the market. Fair enough. What do you think about that live trading? That's what life trading is about. I mean, of course, we have to we have to have the situation. Of course, of course. Yeah. As pros, we have some ideas, maybe some more. Like we you know, okay, these work for like let's say fifty or more percent, it works. You know, and also there is how long does it work? Does it work for two periods, for three? Does it work with a correction or not? You know, like yeah. so so many differences. But anyway, let's say uh, it works and you take a profit. Everybody is totally excited. But who is a better trader? The one who takes profits or the one who can deal with losses? Maybe both. I mean... Yes, of course, you need to talk about yeah, those. Correct. But let's, let's imagine you do live trading and you have your system and you enter the market and, well, the market goes against you. And you end up with, let's say, four trades and four losses. Are you a pro or not? Uh, you cannot say whether you're pro or not, mm -hmm. but right? If I did a lot of live trading and yeah. then I show them when I lose money yeah. and I teach them how to handle myself. Absolutely. Right? That's and then, what it is. Correct. And how to make a recovery plan after right. you got a hit by yeah. the losses yeah. and what's the next strategy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I did. Right? Absolutely. I mean, professional trading is all about your own behavior. Correct. You have to behave professionally. That's what it is, right? Yeah. And behavior is how do I behave with a loss? Do I freak out completely, throwing your keyboard through the room, you know? It's, it's not a good idea with live trading. Or is it like, okay, it's part of the system. Which one you choose? Let me, let me ask you a question yeah. to choose A or B. Right. So the A is, this is related to choose a good mentor, mm -hmm. a good guru. Mm -hmm. So there's a one guru mm -hmm. that always show whatever he makes in live trading, whether lose mm -hmm. or profit, mm -hmm. show it to the public, how you make analysis, mm -hmm. and publish their research to the mm -hmm. public, yeah. which is we are certified analysts, so mm -hmm. we publish our research, mm -hmm. and time will tell whether yeah. we're right or wrong, right? Yeah. This kind of mentor, or the second mentor, he never showed analysis, mm -hmm. he never showed that he is doing the trading plan on mm -hmm. live trade, mm -hmm. but he just showed a portfolio, which is like, this is a portfolio of me, so I'm a great trader, mm -hmm. without showing that he has ability of making analysis. Mm -hmm. If you are like a, 
like a layman mm -hmm. or people who want to learn trade. Yeah. Which one are you gonna choose? How to how to define which one is a good mentor? Well, the question is very easy to answer. I like to answer this with another question: Who do you like to follow more, rich kids on Instagram or Elon Musk? Yeah, that's that makes sense, right? Yeah. So, of course, if I just show you my portfolio, like, hey, I'm the rich guy now. Nobody knows where it comes from, you know. It, it also can it, everything can be fake. So the best proof is you have to have like track records to show to the public. This is my analysis, which is mm -hmm. have this kind of accuracy and show them your how the process to get a portfolio, mm -hmm. the live trading plan or something like that. Do you agree on that? Well, it depends. Again, I mean, it's the same question you asked me right now, what you asked me before, and I also can always can say yes and no. It depends. It also depends what you want to offer to the public. If you feel like, okay, I want to sell my, my system, you better have numbers, right? Okay, yeah. So otherwise, why should I buy your system and do it one to one to one? But again, most people are not able to do this for whatever reason. Maybe they miss one trade because they are like away, and all of a sudden they have a different, you know. But yeah, that's correct. But my point is, uh, you were agree that like having people just showing the portfolio without knowing that how he get that is worthless comparing to people who yeah to show the process sure the process yeah but not always like hey this is my ethics book yes you know? correct it's different. it's different the different process, the process is like this publishing is the analysis yeah. this is what we do yeah. correct this is, this is but i feel it's more important than just going with numbers because numbers is showing off Right? It's showing not, off. It's showing off. It's like wearing Gucci shirts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, you know, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm the rich guy, wow, and I, you know, I made these big numbers. Mm -hmm. What matters most for public is, this is how you can do it. This is the approach I do, and this is where life trading comes Correct. Into yeah, play. that's how you do it. We yeah. have a naked chart here, so how to approach it. Okay, what, what I did when, when we had the last webinar, you know, I just opened a chart, random. I Correct. Said, okay, this is why this is you have support and resistance. So what are the areas? What are the zones? What so at you least you show them, right? right? To show them the way yeah. in the live right. world. I mean the right. webinar is considered like a live coaching. Right. You show them how I make lines, yeah. make analysis, right? Yeah. True. So if, if we go, let's say we, we have a roadshow together. Yeah. And somebody asks, hey, can you ask, uh, can you please analyze uh, the chart X, Y, Z? You open the chart and you ask me, okay, we don't. Where are the points to enter and exit the market? Yes. So I can easily do this. But I can also can tell you that I will never show and say, you have to enter right now. I will always say to you, Correct. okay, watch out for these zones, watch out for this zone, watch out for this signal, watch out for that candle. That's what I call a trading plan. Yeah, and manage yeah. it that way. Correct. And you know, I, in Germany I have um, a weekly show. It's, it's called um, the, the market week. Like it's about how, how, how will the week develop and what to, to look for in the markets. And I always tell the people, you, you, you want to watch for this candlestick signal. You want to watch for the signal in that area. We can't see it right now, but when you watch yourself, mm -hmm. take a closer look at this situation. Correct. And then open your trade, but please don't forget stop loss. So that's what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. So my approach, and I think that's when it comes to teaching, and no matter what, if you do like teaching on private basis or like like company like you have, or if you do it with IFTA, it's always about I want them to be able to do it on their own. The best way is they don't need me anymore. Just for Correct. like, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, that's nice. Regarding the scalping, yeah, I guess you're somehow you do this. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. and. How do you think that people say that scalping will not work at all? So what is the good scalping method? I think it's so ridiculous to say it doesn't work at all. It's too it's arrogant. arrogant. <laughs> no, it's not too arrogant, but it shows a lot about your mindset, mindset. and your belief. Okay. You know, it's like, ah, oh, money is so bad. All the rich people are, um, are, are criminals, you know? It's, it's like <laughs> you say... It's judging. It's judging. Yeah. And first of all is, Yes, for most of most people, scalping don't work for a simple reason. You need to be fast. You need to be have. You need to have fast decision making. You have to enter and exit in very very uh, fast time. Second, most people are greedy. Yeah. So scalping means you enter the trade, you get some points, you try to have 
some some risk reward ratio which is um, which is quite reasonable, and then you exit. Period. No matter if the market might go higher or lower, you don't care. You, you can't care because this is a fast trade. Correct. And scalping is still work for you. Yeah, and it works. What is the best method or indicator or technique that is like everybody can read from the book and people can learn from yeah. IFTA organization? Yeah. What is the best classic or modern technical analysis that can be used or be learned by other people there yeah. for scalping? Price action. Price action. Price action. What kind of price action? Is like support resistance or what? Yeah. Price action means you just follow the trace of the price. Okay. So what? Uh, is best to be used is of course candlesticks. Candlesticks. From candlesticks. Let's let's say you have a hammer or shooting star. Maybe maybe you you have a video people can see just to, to get the explanation yes. what hammer and shooting star is. But let's say you have a hammer. So you want to go long. So you want to buy afterwards. So this is the best approach for enter the market on a very low basis because you know this is something where you see okay market participants they already changed the game. You know, they, they, are, they reverse. And what I like to do, and this is some kind of scalping, um, when I go, you know, market moves up, it does a correction, goes down a bit, moves up again. So most people, they try to, to buy the breakout. And if you buy like a hammer, you, you, come, you come way early in the market. And what I like to do, and this is some kind of scalping, I exit the market when it comes to the point where other people buy, mm -hmm. but I'm out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I sell them my position. So I make the profits, they enter the market, and very often they, they feel like that they buy more or less at the end of the move. Okay. Coming down again, making a loss. See, so scalping is always about profit taking, getting out of the market again, having the fast move. So yes, you can use, of course, you can have some, some indicators or oscillators. What is your use. favorite oscillator? Slow stochastic. Same. 5.3.3? Browser. <laughs> yeah, 5.3.3. Yeah, 5.3.3, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty good on gold as well. And yeah. Then, yeah. How about the stochastic RSI? You know, some people combine both. I don't need both because I use the Bollinger Bands. So I don't need an RSI, I have the Bollinger Bands. They give me quite an impression of volatility, they give you an impression of strength. Oh, so Bollinger is pretty good for scalping as well? Yes, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. With, uh, with uh, how many periods? It's like the standard 20 periods? Or? Definitely. Oh, okay. Bollinger bands are very robust over 40 years. Almost. I talked with the John last time and then yeah. he said that I developed this Bollinger is for stocks, but he never used it for Forex, that's what from his aid. So do you think it's also work in Forex market? You can analyze everything with, uh -huh. with Bollinger Bands. And as, as far as I know, John is also a was, has been their an option trader. So he used, he needed a measurement for volatility. Oh, okay. Right? So, and therefore he developed the, the bands. And therefore you can also have the Bollinger Bands for volatility. So you don't need so much indicators and I mean, it's easy to spot if the market is far away from its own average. So what do you expect? It's overbought. Yeah, over it's, you should be I mean, back to the average. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah. So it should come back. And that's what my idea also is with, with my, my strategy. Just mm -hmm. going back and forth. So basically you are using the Bollinger Bands to see the volatility and also the, the trend direction. Yes. Using the moving averages yeah. and also the oscillator, we're using the stochastic yeah. to see the rate of change or maybe it's like the, what you call, the overbought and over oversold things. Yeah, you know, you can use an oscillator and that's pretty cool. You can use it for several reasons. As a filter. Yeah. Oh. I have a nice candlestick signal, but the market is not overbought or oversold. So maybe it's not really worth This time, it. maybe yeah. the next two, three candles, right? right? So maybe right. It's, it's, it's a fake, you know? Yeah. Because you don't know, maybe the market is not... So it's like confirming delayed. between the, the candle movement and then the momentum itself, yeah. that will help. Yes, right? for sure. So for the last question, are you a trader that looking for a momentum? Why? why? Why is that important? Instead of your waiting or, or you are keep looking for the good moment or momentum to strike the market or... Um, and now we're talking again about my strategy. Yes. Because it's my strategy. Yes, that's you. Yeah, yeah it's me. 
So right. I'm, I'm happy to show this, and it's it's, it's free to see on the, on the web. So you, you go to the website, you register, you get the video. No problem. Correct. Um, but it's mine. And it doesn't work for everybody. Correct. I agree. To. But I give this for an education and for, for, okay, to think about what elements can you use for your own strategy. So what I do is basically I'm looking for overbought and oversold spots. I use Bollinger Bands for it because, and this is great from bon, uh, John Bollinger, he, he developed these bands and he figured out that prices are relatively high or relatively low. And this is perfect because nobody knows if the price is absolutely too high or absolutely too low. Nobody knows, yeah. you know, in, in absolute ways. But relatively, yes. This is what you can figure out, because relatively is always you have to compare. Correct. And the comparison is, is the only average, you know, average Correct. moving, simple moving average 20. That is, if the price goes far away, it's relatively high or low, depending, to its own average. And that's the trick on it. So looking for high momentum is that the price shoots up and building a reversal sign. Yeah outside of the Bollinger Bands. That's what I'm looking for. It's pretty easy, but it's not for everybody. And it's totally fine because, and I know a lot of people need to have fancy stuff and you know, bling, 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 as, as, as much as complicated as, you know, as long as nobody else understands what I'm doing, it's perfect. You know? Yes, correct. So I want to have it easy, simple. I want to see in a glance what's going on and what is for me to do. And therefore, if I have high momentum and I see market shoots up or goes down in a rapid rush, and then I see a reversal, then I have a couple of things to consider. First of all, I see that the market is overdue for a correction, point number one. Second, I see a reversal candle. It says that market participants already begin to reverse. Yes. Right? They begin already to go back to make the correction. All I need to do is say, okay, what's the first profit target? It's the own average by definition, because then it's not overbought, it's not oversold, it's mediocre. Yeah. yeah? It's in its own average. So profit target, done. And by definition, and that's good with the candlestick thickness, if you have an easy way to, to put your stop loss, right? Because by definition, if, if let's say a hammer or a shooting star, if it's taken out, then you have to exit because yeah. the idea of the trade is dead. It's gone. Correct. Right? There is no opportunity left. And again, these two questions. In what direction will the market go with the highest probability the next moment? Okay, so I, I make the analysis and see, okay, market is overbought, oversold. Shoots out of the bands. Just 10% of all prices are outside of the bands. That is, you have a high probability already. Then you have shooting star and hammer. Okay, reaction is going on. And if you, as you know, you should know, uh, they have an occurrence, shooting star and hammer have an occurrence of 60%. Yeah. And now you end up, you have like 10% of all prices outside. Shooting star and hammer have an occurrence of 60%, which is the hit rate is 60%. And then you know, okay, price go back to the average or average goes back to the price. You never know. Yes. This is what happens, yes, right? Correct. So you have all probabilities in your favor. And that's what I do. I'm looking for these spots. So I need high momentum, going up, I'm down, and then correct, mm. reverse. Wow, that's beautiful. So that's it's it. all momentum that you're looking for. Yeah, volatility then, momentum. Yeah, volat volatility momentum. Yeah. Then you're gonna jump into the market. Right. Regardless, you're taking like a long range profits or short term profits, but yeah. the momentum is number one for you. Right. It is. All right. So final word for all trade planners who want to learn technical analysis in the correct way. Well, I could say a lot of things, but first of all, and this is one of the very, very most important things to understand. First of all, trading is pretty simple. It's a trader who is complex because we're humans. And as human beings, although we feel like it's different, yeah. but we are really complex persons. Correct you know, complex uh, uh, beings. So we have to be aware of this. And second is, yes, we need to do our homework and this we need to have a proper understanding of technical analysis, of yeah. how the markets work. 
We don't need to know so much in the first approach about what is going on in the background. This is something you can study if you feel like it's important for you. But you need to be able to see with a quick view, quick glance at the chart to see what's going on and where opportunities lie and if there's something to do or not. Correct. Wow, that's really, really great from Willen. So I'm really thankful for your My pleasure. time here. And pleasure. we really hope people will learn about technical analysis yeah. in the correct way yeah. and join International Federation Technical Analysis, become the certified financial technician. Absolutely. And please support Indonesia and Indonesian trader. We yeah. really love to have our community to mm -hmm. learn more about technical analysis. Yeah. Again, thank you very much, Will. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So that's CEO Talk. I hope you can get a great picture here about the technical analysis. The most important part is what you believe and what you uh, think that is comfortable and suitable for you. So until next time, keep trade, make profit and save. Goodbye. That's already it. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and you took away some learnings for your personal trading. If you want to learn more, about me, about my interview partners, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching or even get into a training course with me or my interview partners, just get into the show notes and follow one of all these links you find there. And then I will be happy to hear and see you again. Your Wieland Alt.